Welcome to This Is My Code. My name is Gerardo, and I'm joined today by Fabian from Domain. Welcome, Fabian. Thanks for having me. So, Fabian, tell us a little bit about Domain and what you do at Domain. Yeah, so uh, Domain is one of the leading property portals here in Australia. And my job there is uh, I'm a tech director looking after the group platforms team. So my teams are building essentially a lot of the, the backend services for uh, powering the, the websites. Our entire infrastructure is on AWS. We, we moved everything there about uh, four or five years ago, I think, yeah. So you're telling us today about a problem that you've solved with serverless technologies? Yes, so the problem is uh, we, we're getting a lot of, uh, a lot of images for prop or properties in Australia. Uh, we've got about 2.2 billion objects in S3, wow. for example, so that's a fair few pictures. Uh, and so what we're trying to do is to classify them uh, um, to, tell, to, to be able to tell which one is a kitchen, which one is a bathroom. Uh, after all, we say that kitchen and bathroom sells, sell houses. Well, yeah, we're trying to prove that. Uh, so, so yeah, we needed to, uh, to label our, our images. So when uh, recognition came out, that was just an ideal candidate for it. And we built a, a serverless project around it. Awesome. So can you, can you walk me through on how the, how the system works? Yeah, sure. So we've got a, a small API to uh, respond to uh, yeah, new images being uploaded, uh, and that creates uh, a message in, uh, in, in an SQS queue. Uh, after that, we've got two Lambda functions. So there is one that is going to be a bit of a, of a dispatcher, if you will. So it's going to look at the, the number of, uh, of messages in the queue every five minutes, mm -hmm. and then decide how many processing Lambdas to, uh, to trigger. So it, yeah, it, it's going to yeah, generate a few. And what the processing lambdas are going to do is talking to uh, recognition to get the labels for our images. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to store the results, store the, the labels in DynamoDB for future, for future use. Great, great. But hang on a second. So um, why not simply just triggering your processes of S3 events? Yeah, that, that's a good question. That's what we thought of initially, but um, we hit the limits on, uh, with, uh, with the lambda, uh, which is the, the number of concurrent execution. Um, we've got a few critical services running on Lambda as well, and we didn't want this uh, to, to impact it in the case we've got, let's say, a million messages get, get dropped all at once. So yeah, so this project is a way of nicely, I guess, throttling the, the processing so that we don't impact other services. Great, so can you walk me through the code of the throttler? Uh, sure. So what we're looking at here is uh, is the dispatcher. So the first thing we're doing over here is uh, just loading up the the Node.js SDKs, um, and um, so so yeah. So the, the dispatcher is very simple. The first thing is to prepare a request uh, to get the metadata for our SQS queue. So that's going to give us an approximate number of messages. Mm -hmm. OK, so once we get the, the number of messages, if the number is greater than 0, we're going to look at uh, uh, splitting the number of messages uh, through a number of, uh, of functions. So the, the threshold is something that we set as an environment variable. Mm -hmm. uh, and then yeah, if I scroll down a little bit here, um, all we're doing is calling the, the Lambda SDK to, uh, to trigger one Lambda for each, uh, each batch of messages we want to process. Now, the important part here is the invocation type for, for the Lambda. We set that to event, so that's mostly like a, like a fire and forget kind of thing, and that means that this function doesn't have to wait for the, the other execution to finish before it returns. So this one is just going to go to sleep, and now it's handed over to the, the processes. OK, that looks pretty straightforward to me. So can you walk me through what the processor is doing? Sure. So for the processor, uh, it's going to run for a longer time. Uh, and uh, Lambda functions can run for up to five minutes. So uh, we need to be aware of this. Uh, that's what we're doing here. So I'm um, starting by picking the, the current time and then calculating what the end time should be. So I'm here I'm going to stop after four minutes just to make sure that I don't have messages that are half processed and that we have to process again. Um, and yeah, that's about it. So until that time comes, uh, what I'm going to do is look at um, the, the SQS queue over here and grab 10 messages at a time. So, so why are you grabbing 10 messages uh, and not just one? Uh, that, that's a good question. That's for uh, um, a, a bit of a cost optimization, I guess. Mm -hmm. So because we're sending high res images to recognition to get, uh, uh, I guess, the best labels possible, uh, we, yeah, it can take about one or two seconds to, to happen. So uh, we've got a, a Lambda just running idle here. So we're trying to, to optimize the cost a little bit by dispatching multiple tasks to our recognition at the same time. Um, so this is what this next bit is doing, actually. So I'm doing a promise.all and then dispatching all the 10 messages that we've, um, that we've just got to, to process them at the same time. So if we scroll down a little bit here, uh, this is uh, what each task is going to be doing. Um, so this is some custom code. We don't necessarily need to go through the details. But what it's going to do, uh, it's going to um, trigger the recognition. 
And then once we get the labels back, uh, write them into DynamoDB so that we can reuse them in real time from, from our apps. Um, and yeah, th this is uh, very simple, this part, really. What we have to do after this is uh, to delete the message the, uh, from SQS, because that's something that is easy to miss. Uh, if we don't do this, the next function is going to pick it up again, and we're never going to finish. Uh, after this, that's just some uh, error handling. So what we found out is that some of our images were not in a format, uh, in, in, in a correct format. So yeah, in that case, we also delete the message so that we don't process it again because mm. the, the message is, in, is invalid. And yeah. This is really nice. So you've got some uh, error handling, you've got some uh, reliability implementations yep. to make sure that you're actually consuming and processing the queue. Mm -hmm. um, and you've also have some cost optimization techniques. That's right. So it's, I'm glad to see this. So can we, can we take a step back and just think about what are the benefits that your users, the, the people that are browsing for properties on domain.com.au, are getting out of this system? Yeah, so what we get out of this is the, the classification of our images so that we can uh, build clever, uh, more clever products, I guess. Uh, we've got a few things that we're working on at the same time using this. Uh, and then, yeah, from a dev and ops point of view, the, 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 the good thing is that it's very easy to manage and uh, uh, it scales infinitely. We don't have to worry about how many messages are, messages are coming in and we know we're going to be OK. It is great seeing Australian customers <laughs> like Domain building serverless technologies so that devs can be happy by building and <laughs> focusing on the business logic. But also, I'm glad to see that you are working on improving my uh, user experience when I'm browsing your website <laughs> for properties. So thank you very much for joining us today, Fabian. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you for watching. This is my code.